Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Excel Quick Trainer, we're going to discuss Excel Basics, the rows and columns. This is video number three of a planned playlist of training videos for Excel. The target audience is science students to get you up to speed on Excel quickly. First up, we're going to discuss how to set row height and column widths. So there are four ways to set the row height. The first is to move the, here's my mouse pointer, move it to the splitter there. That's a splitter uh, mouse pointer. And I get that by hovering. I can go anywhere. Here. Let's see. I can hover right here between rows five and six. Once I get the splitter, then I can click down on the mouse pointer, left mouse pointer button, drag it. Notice as I, I'm still holding the mouse pointer button down, notice the height that tells me exactly how many uh, 75, 76 pixels, etc. And then I'll release the mouse pointer and voila, there. That's method number one for setting the row height. Now, method number two for setting the row height is to get the mouse pointer to a splitter again by moving it right in between and just double click. And it'll auto size to whatever the smallest row height is. And in this case, there's no data in the cell and it's uh, 11 points, so it's just gonna auto size right back to that. So again, drag it, drag another one, double click, well, get the mouse pointer to a splitter and then double click. So that is the first two methods of setting row height. And there's two additional methods. Uh, method number three is to change the font. Let's put some text in here. We have 11 point font, let's make it bigger. And as I make it bigger, look at the row height. And as I make it smaller, the row height shrinks back down. And let's just reset it, we'll copy and paste. Okay, so the fourth method for changing row height is multi-line. And uh, yes, I taught that in the last section. If I have some text and I hit Alt Enter, have some more text, hit Alt Enter, have some more text. When I hit Enter, Alt Enter puts a line feed, stays in the same cell. Enter is this, it just uh, commits the changes and voila, the row height is widened. Now if I make the column a little bit wider, oh, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And there it's corrected, but look at all that white space. And again, I could want to use one of the prior methods, just double click and it'll automatically reset the height. So that is the four ways to set a row height. Column width, a bit different. Let's uh, do the first method, you drag it. And you drag it, and it gives you the pixels and the width up there as well. Now there's a second way that you can change column width besides just dragging it. Let me get some text in here. So that's a little bit shorter than the column width. Again, just like with row height, if I get the mouse pointer to a splitter by moving it right up in between the two columns there, and it has to be, if this is the column I want to resize, I have to go to the right of it. Just like if this is the row I want to resize, I don't go up here and double click, that won't do anything. I have to select this row by getting the mouse pointer at the bottom and double clicking. The column is no different. You go to the right, double click, and boom. It'll auto adjust to the size that best fits the contents of the cell. If I put a whole bunch of other text in here, hit enter, it bleeds far past column C all the way out to column F. I can still double click and it'll automatically adjust. Pretty nice. Um, oh, and there's one other thing that I wanted to show. If I have, let's just copy paste that, like that, I can also hit Control A, or click up here to select everything. And once everything is selected, I do this all the time. I select everything, I double click this, which will automatically resize every column in the entire spreadsheet. And it auto resizes the row height in every row in the spreadsheet. So when I get new data and import it, and it all is, let me highlight it, and let me drag it all down so they're all the same. They're all gonna be tiny and I'll even make the row heights all really tiny. <laughs> Ugh, awful. <laughs> Not that you'd ever have data like this, but if you imported data, you'll have a whole bunch of cells with the data bleeding over, and that's the first thing I usually do is go up here, double click the columns, double click the rows, and now everything's auto fit. Next up, we're gonna insert rows and columns. To demonstrate inserting rows and columns, I've set up a little bit of test data that's all bogus, meaningless, random data. So first we're gonna insert one row and then we're gonna follow that up by inserting multiple rows. So to insert one row, left click 
twice in that case to highlight the row that I want to insert and push down row number five and then once it's highlighted I right click and click insert from the menu and voila it uh, pushed down the row. I can do the same thing for three rows if I want to push eight down three rows I just select with the left mouse pointer drag down release the mouse pointer now I've selected three rows and then I right click and click insert again and there we have it I've inserted three rows um, columns are no different if I want to insert one column I highlight the column I want to move to the right and in this case I just I could left click it left click it and then I right click it and click insert and to do multiple rows if I want to move this three rows over I left click H keep the mouse pointer down drag over and release the mouse pointer that selects three columns then I write and I I can move around there's no mouse pointer down because the selection is made but as long as I click anywhere in the selection right click it then I can get the insert menu and that's how I do that next up how to delete rows and columns to demonstrate deleting rows and columns we're going to start off with the worksheet with test data that we set up last time we're just going to undo it now let's undo it in reverse order let's eh, we'll start we'll do the same order so we'll highlight the row we inserted left click it right click delete highlight multiple rows left click drag release the left click right click delete one column same drill left click to highlight the column right click to pop up the menu delete and again left click drag release three columns selected right click anywhere in the selection delete we've undone our changes and that's how you delete rows and columns next up how to move rows and columns so how do you move rows and columns well in this little snippet we're going to show how to do it but there's a better way in the next section uh, and I'm not going to do rows they're pretty much the same as columns I'm just going to move a, a column so here we go let's take oh say this column so you highlight the column you're not going to right click like we did for inserts and deletes you're actually going to move the mouse pointer until it changes there see the four directional arrows at this point I can left click with the mouse pointer and drag and drop my column and the reason I don't like this move is because sometimes I use it but it's rare it leaves the column H blank and it literally moved the data over to O and let me undo control Z if I were to take this and drag it and drop it here to move it two columns to the left it's not actually going to insert and shift things around oh no it's going to overwrite and it's going to ask you do you want to replace it uh, okay ah, I overwrote my data this column moved and the column thing too that was underneath got overwritten so undo and we're back to where we were so I rarely use this move if anything I might grab like a chunk of this cells parts of columns parts of rows and I may just drag this somewhere I do that a lot but there's a better way to move columns and rows and I'll show you that in the next section next up a better way to move rows and columns by using cut paste so here's the way I move rows and columns around with the cut paste let's say I want to take hmm, yeah I'll take the case so I'll highlight the range case I I could have selected and dragged and dropped or I could left click press down the shift key and then left click that'll select the range as well anyway either way select the range right click cut you get your little wire rope that's swirling that means that this range of cells is cut and then I go up and put it where I want it now let's put it here so I right click insert cut cells and voila the three K's were inserted up there and I did not lose any data it pushed all the data down and adjusted everything accordingly undo let's do the same thing with columns escape so the wire rope disappears <clears throat> let's say I want to take all of these columns so I can multi select all those right click cut get my little wire rope going let's say I want to move them back here and I want C to move over so I right click on C oh I would never right click a range you just the starting point is all you do so if I want to move these columns I cut them and then I right click and I insert the cut cells and I select just one column C as the point at which to insert them and there we go and I could control X and insert cut cells to put them back or I could have undone and that's how I like to move 
rows and columns around is with the cut paste. Next up, how to copy paste rows and columns. Sometimes you'll want to copy a row or column and insert paste it somewhere else in the same worksheet. And it's very similar to doing the move that was used based on cut paste. So let's say I want to take the row Jill and have two of them for whatever reason. So I highlight the row, uh, let's do Jill and Jerry. So I'll highlight two rows and I will control C to copy it or I can right click and copy. Once I get the wire rope going, just like the cut, then I just go to where I want to move it. Let's let's make a copy right down here. We'll have one right after the other. So I highlight row six, right click and insert copied cells. And voila, I have the Jill Jerry row once there and once there. Now notice, so I highlighted it and then I did my right click, insert copy paste. It's still highlighted, it still has the green squiggles, but if I right click, there is no insert copied cells. So that's one interesting thing. For whatever reason, every time you do it, you have to re-copy it. And now you get one shot with a right click, insert copied cells. And once you use that shot up, it's gone. You only have insert there. So just be advised of that. You have to redo it multiple times. Undo, undo, oops, undo. And uh, columns are no different. I can, let's do age twice. Copy, right click, insert copied cells, and voila puts it in. Next up, how to freeze rows and columns on screen so that they don't scroll off. On big worksheets, it can be important to have navigational cues to know where you're at. As such, Excel allows you to freeze columns and rows. So here on this sheet, I've expanded it a bit, but it has multiple columns. That I can't see what's over on the left. I can't see the uh, ID column here. It's gone once I start scrolling. And then likewise, when I start scrolling vertically down, I'm going to lose my column headers and not know what is this. I don't know what that column is. It's been lost. So that's why you will want to freeze rows and columns on bigger worksheets. First, let's start by simply freezing the top row, the column headers here. To do that, it doesn't matter where your cell, what cell is selected or what's going on, simply click View, Freeze Panes, freeze the top row. And it was subtle, but there's a dark, well, a moderately dark gray line that goes all the way across here. It wasn't there before, and now it's present. If I scroll now, look what happens. My column headers stay, and I can scroll without losing that. So again, that was view, freeze panes, freeze top row. Now if I want to undo that, I simply go back to view, freeze panes and unfreeze panes. And when I click this, watch that gray line. Oop, that gray line disappeared right there. And now if I scroll, it's just another cell. It's no longer a header cell, it disappears. Likewise, you can freeze the leftmost column here of these ID fields so that they don't scroll off screen. Watch, they scroll off screen and I can't tell what ID I'm at. So to do that, doesn't matter what cell you're anchored on, go to view, freeze panes, freeze first column. And voila, that darker gray line appeared and goes shoots all the way down, splitting it. Now when I scroll, that's very nice. That left column doesn't move. And when I use the cursor key, it's the same thing to move. I can move off screen and it's just going to scroll, but leave that nice anchor column there. To undo the column freeze, same as before. Go to the view menu, freeze panes, drop down, unfreeze panes. And now we're back to normal. Now, neither the header row one or the leftmost column stay locked. So how can we freeze one top row and the leftmost column all at the same time? Well, the answer is surprisingly simple. Just highlight the cell that's in the, in the intersection right below the row and right to the right of the column. It's with the blue highlighted sections here, it's really easy to see. Um, anyway, you just Put the cell pointer there and click view, menu item, freeze panes, and then freeze panes again. And look what happens there. Now we have a line going down this way and a line going that way. And as we scroll down, the header row doesn't move. And as we scroll to the right, the column doesn't move. So we've done both. And again, just like the other two sections, anytime you want to undo it, view, freeze panes, 
unfreeze paint and it's gone. Now if I want to do something crazy like have a 3x3, three three, so there's 3, there's 3, or my 3x3 three three grid, grid, I can click right down here and I can make that my freeze paint sections. View, freeze paints, freeze paints. And now I have the top three rows and the left three columns. So sometimes you have a table and you have a primary key and if you column headers you'll end up having several columns that you freeze and one or two rows at the top. And to undo this all again, freeze panes, unfreeze. And the last topic for this quick trainer is how to rapidly move around with control and the arrow keys. On big worksheets, it can be important to move around quickly. Even on this small data set, I may want to jump around. And uh, there's a way to do that, and it's by holding down the control key and pressing a uh, cursor directional key up, down, left, or right. And what will happen is, the, you, let's say I'm on this cell. If I hit control right, it's going to jump to the next difference. Well, the last populated cell before a difference, which is a space. So control right, jump me here. If I hit control right again, it's going to jump me to the end of the workbook. Control left, first change is that rightmost position in my range of data. Control left again goes to the beginning. Control down goes to the first change, which is the end of my uh, data set. Control down again jumps to the very end of the workbook. Let's uh, page up a bit, throw a little bit of data down, throw a little bit of data down, page up, throw some data down, control home. Okay, control down jumps me to the first difference, scrolling the screen. Control down again jumps me to the next difference. Control down, I keep jumping. Control down, it's just jumping to each different data cell until it hits the last one. Control up, delete, control up, delete, control up, delete, control up, there we go, and control home. So that is a very handy way to quickly move around in your data. Uh, so just like it works up and down, it works left and right. And let me give you some visual here. Let me take out some data. And let me go to the beginning and control down. And then uh, right arrow, control, right arrow. Oh, oh, I shouldn't do that. My keyboard's broken. Let me try that again. New keyboard and it came with the right arrow key broken. Okay, so control, right, control, right, control, right, control, right, control, right to the end and control, right. So that gives you an idea of how the control up, down, left, and right works. It, it lets you jump through data, especially if you have sparsely populated data with lots of spaces and you want to jump quickly through it, you can control up or down and, and move through your data quickly. And with that, we wrap up this quick trainer on Excel rows and columns. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.